Now then, last year the UK government decided that standard premium unleaded petrol would go from being E5 to E10. That's to say it would have an ethanol content of 10% rather than the previous 5%. The expectation is that it should cut CO2 emissions by 700,000 tonnes. The same time though, has the potential to damage the fuel systems in thousands of older road vehicles, cars, bikes, the lot. In short, it's because ethanol is quite an aggressive solvent, so the higher ethanol content in E10 can, if left for long enough, start dissolving certain materials, things like rubber hoses, o-rings, plastic parts and certain soft metals. Or that's what we're led to believe. Because of course you can still purchase the lower content E5 petrol in the form of the higher octane super unleaded fuel, but of course that's usually a good 10% more expensive. But do we really need to? Does the extra 5% of ethanol per litre of fuel really make a difference? Or is it just scare tactics from the government and the petrochemical industry who both stand to gain, gain massive amounts of revenue when anyone with a 20 year old or older car switches to the super unleaded fuel, which is more expensive? I'm keen to find out, so I'm going to conduct a little experiment. Bike sausage. My hypothesis is that although chemically E10 fuel has got the potential to be more harmful to a range of materials, in practice, the difference between E5 and E10 won't be great enough to cause any significant effect to anything that it might come into contact in its everyday application. And that the government and the petrochemical industry are dead keen E5 super unleaded fuels used in older vehicles, firstly because of the massive financial benefit to them, and secondly because they're desperate to avoid any possible legal ramifications on the microscopically slim off chance that E10 does cause lasting damage to anyone's vehicles. Now, that's what I think at the moment, and I know it's not a particularly popular view, so that's why I've designed this little experiment to try and find out the truth. In front of me, I've got a selection of objects to represent parts in a typical fuel system. We've got a piece of fuel hose there, a tie wrap, a steel washer, some brass. Now, that is just a lump of brass, but that is representative of a um, uh, a jet in a in a in an old cab. An O-ring to represent an O-ring, and a little piece of aluminium. That's actually a little tiny bit of a aluminium welding rod. So the plan is to submerge, if you like, all these parts in some E10 fuel and some E5 fuel. Now I've got some fuel, E10 and E5. My fuel sample, I'm going to have two samples of each of the fuels. One in a vented jar and another one in a sealed jar. So we're going to measure all the parts, weigh all the parts, note everything down like a proper scientist, and then put each of the components into the different fuel samples, leave it for a month or two, and see what happens. We'll measure all the stuff when we take it out, weigh it, see if anything, see if the weight of anything's changed, see if the dimensions of, every, of anything's changed, to see whether or not the different types of fuel affect the different components, and if they do affect them, how much they affect them, and whether there's any difference in the effect. So, without any further ado, let's do some science. It's been exactly two months since we set this experiment up and as you can see by the fuel samples the biggest difference is the fact that the fuel in the vented jars has almost completely evaporated. We put 200 millilitres of fuel in each of the jars and as you can see by the jars without the lids on it's nearly all gone. The jars that are sealed have still got roughly 200 millilitres in them, 
But we all know fuel is going to evaporate when it's left to vent, so no surprise there. What we really want to know though is whether or not any of these fuels have affected the materials that we put in there at all, and if they have, whether or not there's a difference between the effect that the E5 fuels had on the materials and the E10 fuels had. So, what conclusions can we draw? Well, first of all, it turns out I was wrong. Because according to my experiment, there is a difference in the way components of certain materials react to E5 fuel compared to E10 fuel. That said, the only material that really showed any real signs of effect from the fuel was rubber, specifically the O-ring. Now, across the board, there were a few slight differences between the weights and measures of the components before and after being submerged in the various fuel samples after 60 days. But, if we allow for a measuring accuracy tolerance of, say, 1 gram and 0.2 of a millimetre, you could say almost all of the differences are negligible, apart from in the case of the rubber O-ring. Because, after being submerged in the non-vented E10 fuel for 60 days, the rubber O-ring was 0.4 of a mil thicker than it had been before, which is quite a lot of growth. Particularly when you consider the fact that the O-ring is a type of seal that is almost always used in fuel systems, old and new. So, if you're using an O-ring made out of rubber which isn't resistant to the extra ethanol content of E10 fuel, you might come unstuck. Because if E10 has that effect on that particular rubber after two months, imagine how much of an effect it could have after, say, two years. So, if you're wondering whether or not it's worth risking sticking E10 fuel into your classic bike, I really would think long and hard about it. If you want my advice, for the extra couple of quid it's going to cost for you to fill the tank up, I think it's definitely worth opting for the higher octane, lower ethanol content, super unleaded fuel. I might have been slightly sceptical about it before, and I'm still not 100% convinced exactly how much transitioning to E10 fuel is going to help save the planet, but now, after conducting my little experiment, I am convinced that it can and probably will cause problems to your fuel systems, if your fuel system hasn't been made with the latest up-to-date materials. So, use E10 fuel at your own peril.